Zone 3 Podcast. I am Robert. Yes, and I am Reggie. Today we are joined by the OG himself, Jonathan Davis. Jonathan, yes. thank you. Hey, I've been very Richard. honorable, man. <laughs> well, yes. It's been about, what, about a year now, right? Yeah, well, uh, technically it was 2019. Well, to be clear, Jonathan was our very first guest, right? right. Took and a couple of episodes <laughs> to get that one right, our very first episode <laughs> right. So That's true. We appreciate you coming back for those. Right? And what was yeah. the topic? We uh, did with Jonathan was protocol, protocol optimization. optimization. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we got good yeah. feedback on that. Thank you for that, Jonathan. So, and you know, it. we're kind of optimizing protocols to an extent. It's just live today, right? Because we're mm -hmm. talking about MR artifacts. Yeah, this is going to definitely be dynamic. I am hoping it's something different than what you're normally used to. Yeah, which I, gives us anxiety. Good. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan is the only guest that showed up with an etching sketch. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and candles. But uh, <laughs> so, if you're listening, make sure you tune in on YouTube so you can definitely catch the uh, uh, so visuals. I have yes, no idea where this is going. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> you will be able to hit the lights at one point, right? <laughs> we always can have the demo good, of lights. Good, good. Uh, we'll, we'll do because I got. Don't forget the beacon, man. <laughs> oh beacon. right. Oh dang! I should have added that to our little button pressing. That but we been thought automatic. it'd be a fun episode. We're talking about MRI artifacts. There's lots of them out there, um, and it's sometimes hard to identify. And if you, first of all, have a hard time identifying them then you got to figure out how to troubleshoot them yeah and so first step would be identifying i mean that's my opinion right oh right. absolutely yeah um but we kind of get into that we've got for sure an outline to the episode but it looks like you've got some things in mind here did you want to start it off with that yeah, you first know of all he, he <laughs> surprised us we were not expecting <laughs> this but go ahead and uh, i give all credit to everyone credit to the good lord credit to those who put the books together and made etch -a sketches so You're right. you know i'm <laughs> happy to share any material i have and be honest to work where I get it, um, oh, awesome. public domain is excellent. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we'll actually start with a quiz. Sometimes you might have to. Uh, start, starting with a quiz. And by the way, Jonathan is a professor. Do you still teach at a college? I, I do. I do um, intro to MRI. If he doesn't look like a professor, I don't know who does. <laughs> Shows up in a Hawaiian shirt and a mountain man beard. Right. <laughs> oh, I think there's a good, I mean, there's good references. We could talk about, well, well first of all, what was... Um, I guess it was, uh, I was thinking Robin Williams from Goodwill Hunting, but he I guess he was the therapist, right? Oh, right, right, right. Okay, well, I'm hor MR therapist. horrible analogy then. Never That's mind. Uh, okay, Bad I'll reference. be your MR therapist. <laughs> 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 I, I could use one. one. I could yeah. use one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But, well, what are the two people that love MRI most? Uh, me and Reggie. Like, pa <laughs> <laughs> patience, patience. Uh, uh, people who love the most. Yeah, well, I don't know. love to be in there. There's the ones who have young kids. Mothers. mothers That's mothers, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And... Well, shoot! Now you, I almost don't want you to answer. I want, I want. If we had to stay here for the rest of the day, I want to come up with this. <laughs> Sons are playing. Oh, <laughs> uh, athletes! Uh, Just people are looking. I don't know. Doctors. Okay. Those are the two people oh. that are always busy and and they're yeah, always right. bugged. So they're like, "Hey, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to enjoy this time. You right. you could VRBO this MRI tube. <laughs> and the mom sleep right through. Oh it, yeah, they're yeah that's noises. their free time. <laughs> right. right. Doctors and moms. And it's their downtime or their quiet time. It is. Too. It's their yeah. <laughs> it's noisy relative. as we are. Yeah. Here's your earplugs. This is your quiet time. Oh man. Well, let's do this, uh, yeah, so Jonathan. We're just you've gonna got jump in, and yeah. um, I don't know what the percentage of what you have to get to be to have an A. There's I believe 17 questions. You're we'll start the teacher. You decide on the curve. Okay, so here you go. I'm not going to give you any hints. Reggie and Robert just independently. Do I just, hit? Yeah, just write your answer. Right we'll down. go. We'll go over them and we'll. Ah, see. you're gonna. Yeah. I, I could at least go for like a just multiple the, choice. Uh, no, 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 no. We're saying like where is or what the artifact is, or we're yeah. saying the remedy. Are we going through just the answer of what we think the artifact is? You can just. We'll just say name and that. And then we'll artifact. just put it up okay. to the camera. Yeah, just name that artifact. See. See, the problem is I've got a doctor's handwriting. That's all right. <laughs> well, so number one. What really? Because we'll go just make a list. Make a list. Like okay. one in, in line next. Okay. Kind of like because you'll need all this paper. There's 17 of them. Uh, okay, oh, ready? Right. Right. Okay, okay, ready? So oh, number one, you got it. for the camera. Okay, number two. What is it? Name that artifact. Uh, oh. Now, I don't have a laser pointer. I put that. I put that in my things needed, Robert. <laughs> Did you, do you have next a laser time we'll pointer? have a little oh, merch. Man. It'll be yeah. like a Zone Three podcast <laughs> laser pointer. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be MR safe, by the way. Because <laughs> Kathy, Kathy, by the way, hi out there, <laughs> calls us out on that if our MR merch is not MR safe. So oh, I love it. I love yeah, it. I love it too. Thank you, Kathy. And you guys tell me when you're ready. All right. Okay, I'm two. ready. I'm yeah, ready. this is two. And you can write small or make a list, whatever. I don't know if you guys have a ton of paper. Here we go. Oh, that's true. Let's do a list. <sighs> Question three. Is it going? 
By the way, we have a quiz for you. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, uh, good. We'll do it off air. This. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, see, I, I don't know the name of this one, but I can tell you the cause of it. So it, where? Which it's, one? It's it's. Oh, I see. Okay. On the far left, the the vertical column, and also all three of those images. Uh, on the right. So it would be like a. So it's everything except the middle humorous image. Oh. Images. Um, oh, it looks like this is three, right? Yeah, question three. All right, I'm, I feel like I'm doing good so far. So I'm okay. so far, good. I'm happy. See if you pass your boards, <laughs> <laughs> your artifact boards. I'm creating a new I license. I think I just jinxed myself, though. <laughs> it's all right. My goal is to humiliate the host. I don't, I don't know if that's proper form. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty easy to do. With, on this. <laughs> you showed up with you, you embarrassed me with that manly beard of yours. Yeah, there you wish go. I could grow something Step like that. Step one. All right, <laughs> I'm ready for four. Sorry, I'm the slow one, everyone. No, it's all right. It's all right. Here we go. Four. Name that artifact. That looks like a pterodactyl or turkey's. <laughs> Somebody got some busted feet. No, your scan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. You know, I was actually just saying this day, the other day at work. I would love like to f- play a fun game of like it's just one slice and you have to name the anatomy, and it's oh, like yeah. a super lateral slice or something. So it's hard. Oh right. Yeah. Um. Okay. You ready? I'm not. I'm unsure of that one. Okay. Well, I got to move on. Okay. Go. Kids want to go to the game. <laughs> 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 All right. Name that artifact. Oh, I feel like this should be an easy one. Dang. That's what I thought the last one was. <clears throat> it could be the same. Well, I'm, I'm just saying. It's like a... See, I, I'm gonna put a I different like name for me. Right? <laughs> now they have multiple names, right? <laughs> oh, thank you. You ready? Ready. I'm not really. Robert's lagging here. I hope everyone who's watching is taking this as well. Yeah, I'm not getting it. All right. Oh, Question that's six. That one we just went over. Oh, you did a little prep work. I see. That's good. Study yeah. for your boards here. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Reggie and I are not gonna catch us slipping. <laughs> <laughs> This is six, right? This is six, yeah. See, I don't... Whatever. You ready? Yeah. yeah. There's 17 of these? Yeah. It's okay. We'll get through them. Well, obviously, that's a... What is that right there? Make um, yeah, the mouse is... Oh, here it is. It's... Wrist? See Not these bad. lines here? Oh, see, right. and that's okay. what I thought this the other the one was. But he said it could be the same thing. Yeah, you can write. you can write whatever you want. All right. <clears throat> I'm just putting different names for them. I should have shut up when I was feeling confident in the beginning. I was four for four. <laughs> I'm just trying to shoot your confidence. <laughs> I so made our quiz way too easy. The this is the issue here where that. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I mean, this is what for eight. Yeah. Coming to the halfway point. That's the EPI sequence, right? It is. It is very good. You s- you named it correctly too, by the way. Oh, <laughs> nice. <coughs> a lot of people call it diffusion, and this would be the ADC, but oh, right. diffusion is actually not a sequence. Oh. That's the process we're imaging. That was, came from Faulkner in his lecture. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Nice. If you go to build the sequence as a protocol, or you pick EPI as your sequence. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. You s- <laughs> do I get extra credit for that? You do. Yes. We're trying to get the guy on that developed that. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Who named the B value after himself? Mr. B. Mr. B. He's he's in France, I believe. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows that. <laughs> mm, edge slice, man. These edge slice ones are getting me. <laughs> Almost looks like fingerprints on a finger. That's the thing. And since it's probably going... Uh, All these lines here. All right, I'm going to go with... Uh, I just keep writing down the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're not just putting artifact, are you? Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Call engineer. That's how. I got, that's what got me through high school. <laughs> uh, don't tell me you put the same thing for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving me an easy one. Finally. Yeah. Oh yeah, everybody knows this one. So there's different sets, like 
down here. It's this line in the middle. You can kind of yeah, see it like coming in vertically here. And then on this farther, further one over here, I circled it. Come, looks like a little fingernail. <coughs> did you get it? I, I think I did. Say, okay. But I don't know if it's a vendor term or not. Or if it's an actual term. I know that's that's a hard thing for you having an a, an MRI podcast is you got to have that vendor spreadsheet for each sequence. Right. I'm particular to one vendor, but I'll do my best to interpret that because yeah. the physics are the same, right? Right. Everybody's going to go about it a little different and slap their own name do, on it. Which do we is great. do we lose points for spelling? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, oh, what was that? What was twelve? So sorry, this was twelve here. And then that's oh I see okay I see and it's yeah it's these kind of wavy wave lines light. yeah okay you're trying to get me to tell you the answer mm -hmm. yeah you saw that right <laughs> so, I've been teaching for just a little bit so, uh, there's always <laughs> one no in the trips. class always <laughs> one in the class <laughs> all right I'm good all right. right All right, I think I'm good, too, on that one. Good. Robert, don't forget to put your name on your paper. Well, there's one on for sure. <laughs> Do I get extra credit for that? <laughs> I had teachers. You remember those kids? They turn yeah. it in. No name. <laughs> no name. I don't know. This is an interesting one. Oh, did you get it? Ready. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. more time. There we go. 14, 14. Uh, <clears throat> All right, I'm good. It's the same thing. It's just what's causing this issue here. Um, Over here, it's the liver. It's kind of burnt out. But here you can see it. This one's uh, actually a I mean, I feel the like artifact the with the solution, you know. Would you just yes, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, coming <laughs> to the end here. Coming to the end. So the artifact is the right column here. What's what's all this stuff? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, last question. You fellas ready? Hold on. Oh, sorry. I Let me go few. back. Let me. <laughs> I missed a few. I missed a few. What was 15 again? My bad. I, I guess I was. <laughs> There's just... always one in the group. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. I was wondering if you're ever going to do this one. I hope it's not the very first one you've done. Or that it is. I mean, All right. you're number 17. So number seven. Did you see 17? You got 16, right, Reggie? I yeah. saw 17. Okay, so here's 17. All right. This has been a humbling experience, John. Good. That's it. Uh, <laughs> see y'all later. We'll be uh, hopefully coming back <laughs> next time. <laughs> you know, humiliate the host and leave. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we'll start off. And I mean, uh, artifacts is my alley. I love, I'm a tinker. My dad was a tinker when he, uh, just growing up, I would see him. He made lifters for cars. And oh, nice. uh, by the end, it was just him. And I would come in and visit just as a, as a young boy. And I mean, he could sit in one place, but he had a gadget and a gizmo for, for every little door and phone, and it was just the neatest thing. So that's kind of what, where I get who I am, and I just apply it to work. Okay, what caused that? What's the solution? How do I look at this differently? Is it mechanical, technical, positional? And just start troubleshooting and going from there. And so those are kind of like three buckets that you can – put artifacts in okay what there's always a root cause right. so if you can uh, you know start to deduct okay what's my issue and how do we get to the end result you know these three might help you get there a little sooner so you're not troubleshooting all day and you know explaining to the boss why you're behind so that's your starting point right identify where the issue is stemming from so where would a mechanical I mean, so you're saying a mechanical issue is something with like the system or like the like coil, like, RF leak, like you might have like the coil not plugged in all the way. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, some I some see. machines give you a bias there. I had it. Uh, I worked yesterday actually on an older uh, machine, and I mean, it it was the abdomen coil, and of course, my lady was like mid 80s abdomen, and 
and I'm double checking, triple checking, got the cords all laid out, you know, MRSO safety, right, running right, those yeah. things safe and just getting a bias error. And I'm like, oh man, What's I know. On? And I know. So do you know what the bias error is or? Yeah, I've seen it on some of our GEs before, right? Yeah. That's right. So they have pins that make sure the, the connection is, is a closed circuit. And sometimes you can plug it in and get a green light. Okay, you're good to go, right? I had the green light. I had everything good. But one of those bias pins it was just not connecting. So it will not scan. It says, hey, there's an issue. Oh, right. And in fact, when I started, this is, I haven't been doing MRI forever, but I started as a tech aide in 2003 at right. County. And back then, they had fuses in the coils. If you plugged in the wrong coil and didn't pick it at the machine, Oh, it blow the fuse? It, it blow, it'd blow the coil. It'd blow oh. the fuse. Yeah, so the, then the, you know, the engineers would have to come out and replace the fuse. So I was always, when I got to MR, you know, am I going to mess this up? Am I gonna, <laughs> uh, fortunately, technology has been updated as well to have right. auto coil detect and things like that. Right. It, it's really the issues if you had a TR coil, right? Because a transmit receive, where's the RF coming from? Right. It's coming from the coil, so... If you're using the big body as your RF, boom, you just blew your coil. So that's why having uh, the first time I saw it was actually Siemens, the Tim system. Yeah. They were unique because if you're plugged in, you're grounded. And if it's a receive oh, coil, right. you can use multiple coils together. That's why now you can do brain, total spines, yeah. throwing a hip and ankle. If I it's all that. receive, yeah, you've got a good chain that's pretty safe. Right. Now, positional, that patient position? Or we're like talking about. Yeah, like, what do you mean by position? <clears throat> Those are actually both accurate and correct answers. Okay. So um, how's your coil position? How's your patient position? I, you know, what's the direction you're going? We'll see that. We'll get to the bore monster. All right. Um, so positional acts as, as a lot. And I, I just want to throw it out there because you, you know, what's that movie? Meeting John Malkovich. I've never seen it, but isn't there like a door to his mind? Like, these are just all my opinions, the, <laughs> the way I view the world. Right. I'm just allowing you into my mind how I see things. It's a little creepy, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little creepy, but you still invited me. <laughs> <laughs> but the way I look at it is this. Um, actually, there's a, it's called the Rosin House. Have you been downtown? It's right next to the stadium in, no. in Phoenix. And the dude was a surgeon, like, in the late 1800s. He took, like, two summer courses and became a surgeon. And they had, oh, wow. they still have some of the stuff there. And it was, a like, a... Almost looked like, you know, those little horns that the cheerleaders yell out, you know, oh, go team. Right, it was right. like that, but it was made of wood. I had no oh. clue what it was for. Do you know what it was for? Oh, no, what yeah. is that? Auscultating. Or it basically, they would listen to the baby in the womb. It was like a baby stethoscope. Really? Mm -hmm. And the reason I mention that is my mind works like this. We're using these coils to pick up the signal coming out of the patient to generate an image. So positional. That coil is a stethoscope. It's our stethoscope. Now, if I move the stethoscope just a few millimeters off my skin, how effective is that? Ooh, yeah. Back one here as well, right? Yeah. yeah, it's the same thing. For us, if we move that coil off one centimeter, you can lose up to 80% of your signal. Wow. So that, that would be sense. a positional, yeah. And I, I see it very common just to throw it out. I uh, even got a phone call this week like, hey, I was on a date with my wife, but I'm like, hold on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she was driving. So she was very, very, you know, she was very cordial about me answering this. It was a new tech and she's like, my shoulder's just not turning out. And if you're using like a flex coil or a paddle setup, like dual flex is two paddles. A lot of people just throw it on like pancakes, uh -oh. but you need to take that and conform it around the deltoid. Right. And you know, again, if you don't, you just shot all your signal here. So wrap it around, conform it and you'll get your SNR back. Right. Man, nice. Well, I know what technical is. It's whenever a tech, you know, it's a tech problem, right? The tech either didn't put the patient <laughs> in right in the scanner or something, right? Oh, that's funny. No, I, I remember in x-ray school, and I'm, I can't believe they said that. Like, Just blame the patient. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But, yeah, there are things that we do, our TR, our TE, our flip angles, oh, you know. Software-based, Software-based, huh? Software base, okay. yeah. Things that we uh, have, you know, extrinsic factors, as they would call it. We have control over these. What are we doing to give the patient the best image? Um, so those are kind of the three big buckets, and then just jumping in. A few times to wake it up, sorry. Is it, did it go? There we go. So jumping in, number one. So. Oh, yeah, my number and one. I, and I'm not going to make you hold it up or anything and, oh. sh and show the audience. This wasn't number one, was it? <laughs> it no. was number one. Oh, I thought it was the T-spine flow. It, it is. It is. Oh, but it's so a that artifact is an effect. It's super common, and and this is just oh, okay. this is the fix. So oh, I see. Number one, and we, I don't have the screen, 
but I mean, you could, Dave, if you wanted to jump back to number one to show him. Yeah, jump back. What to that caused artifact. that artifact? If you have the. Yeah. So right there, see that artifact, that feathery appearance? Right. That's an effect. Oh, okay. And so now if we go back to that, there you go. And you just, right there. Thanks, Dave. So what causes it, and, and this is my analogy, and, and that's, this is the candle experiment if you want to do it. We can, we can do yeah, this. Yeah, totally down. I do love you, experiments you, live. Did Man, you, I love that. You ever watch Mr. Wizard? I don't know how old you guys are. <laughs> I just remember him like on Nicola. He looked like Captain Picard. And I just remember the intro, and he was like blowing up a hot dog. I mean, <laughs> like, that was cool. Like, who hasn't blown up a hot dog in a microwave? Right. <laughs> but uh, these are my Mr. Wizard experiences. And I'll kind of explain. Your field of view is, is like the football field, right? And we've got signal. See that big line? And th this is... Um, I put floor artifact down for this one. Just for That's profit. what I put. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, which is interesting because it, it does. You see a, a massive direction right. of, of flow. The feathery appearance is like an extreme version. But again, back to the football analogy or whatever, sports analogy. Right. Imagine your field of view is the playing field. Mm -hmm. But... The question is, does the crowd interfere with the players? Oh, yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah, I was watching the, the Suns game. I mean, how, how cool is that? And you could the whole crowd's just like right. chanting, you know, the Bucks are shooting and right. bonk, and they're just like going wild. Like, <laughs> I can't imagine. But you know those players on the field are hearing yep. the crowd. Even no matter how much they try to tune it out, <laughs> yeah. you know they hear it. MRI works the same way. If your coil elements are too big, if you've picked too big a coil, and we've all done it. When I was new, it's just like, I'm scanning a hand. What should I use? Throw the body coil on. We'll get it. You know, every, everybody right. gets lazy and, and right. throw that big coil on there and, and we'll get what we need. But the issue is you're going to create more problems because K-Space doesn't know how to handle all the signal outside the field of view. And so you map it through. And that's the Anifact artifact. Oh. And so that's why for the experiment. I don't know if we got nice. For yeah. Yeah. So I view elements as like a motor. Now, I'm not saying this to brag or sound cool, because uh, when I grew up, we had a motor home. Like, but like we broke down in every state, literally, true story, every state from here to Massachusetts, minus like two. So having, having a motor home is not necessarily the coolest thing. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing I want to state is, I remember my dad said what type of motor was in it. It was a 455. I'm like, that's a, that's, a, that's a hot rod motor, right? And so coils work the same way. So if these are your channels, we'll, oh, we'll, we'll say these are like two channels and we want to scan. How's that look on camera, Dave? I can't really, can't really see. I know we need a top-down camera. Uh -huh. You Let's do. Clean, those, you uh, clean these corners down. That's why we like to record live so everyone can see. <laughs> How it's done. No. Good idea. We could try to use... Uh, or we could talk about it. I, I mean, I, I can just kind of give you the general idea. Yeah, we can so, kind of go through it. Just, yeah, just keep... Yeah. So say you're scanning a knee, right? Right. And it happens to be the large patient. Oh, they're not going to fit in our transmit receive. What coil are you going to go for? I mean, flex, maybe? yeah, if, if you have it, I mean, back in the day, all we had was the body, body coil, you know, oh, an eight channel right. body coil. So right. how many channels? Eight channels, right? But if your channels are way beyond your field of view, that signal has to get mapped out. And that's why it's going to show up as an effect. Oh, but, and the reason, okay. and the reason I say it's like a motor, um, it's an eight channel body coil, right? Right. It's a motor home. What if you take those eight channels and put them in a 10 by 10 centimeter coil? It's a 455 in a convertible. Now you got a hot rod. <laughs> and so that's what ah. I do. I, I say, hey, use the smallest coil possible. You take all those channels. Boom. And now, yeah, these are just, these are just glorious images. You know, something to make the, the rads cry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Which on the light they're reading, right? that's it. I, I dream of them just crying. Like, wow, somebody used eight channels in a small field of view? Right. That's way better than a body coil on a knee. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I like exactly. It. Yeah, so that's kind of my analogy for what causes anaphylaxis. It's very, very common. It's one of the most uh, frequent questions I get. Hey, what causes this? What causes? Well, you're doing a hip, and you chose not to use the the small flex coil. What did you use? Well, I used the cardiac coil. Well, then you're going to have to deal. You got a bigger coil. Your field of view smaller. Where's that signal going in case space? Right. Ah, oh, nice, so, nice. Yeah. And, and you so spell he, it out so clearly. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, you're in my creepy mind, remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing is, I, you know, some things are simple for some people. It, to me, this is how the concept works. So this was an actual case, and I think this was a DV26 software, where you could actually, the scanner tries to assume the best coil selection automatically. It created the artifact. My workaround was, you can actually shop around on those older um, software. I'm now on the 29 software with... Um, like if it's a tall person, go four, five, six on a lumbar. And, and that's a great, great one, too. And I think I actually have that coming up here. Let's see. So, Robert, your question is, on an older system, you see right there? Four, five, six. <laughs> right. Because, <laughs> again, I, I, you get a pediatrics or a, a little old Susie granny and... Uh, I got Anifact and I, I, these protocols suck and you know, it's like, okay, it's, it's not a cookie cutter machine. So let's think. Right. So you don't see where the coils start and stop, right? right. It's an older unit, but how many coils do you have on? Yeah. Four, five, six, you have three coils. Divide, divide that top left column into thirds. Look where the light is. So you can take this light and just divide it into thirds. One, you know, here. Mm -hmm. So, we're scanning an L spine. I don't need any of this signal here. That will just lead to an effect. My field of view is going to be smaller than that. Right. So the fix is you can go to your coil selection and do four or five and apply all. Nice. And you just eliminated an effect. You turn a coil off that's non-contributory to your field of view. And you didn't lose any signal because that signal was outside your field of view to begin right. with. Right. Nice. And now is Anifact seen more on 1.5 versus 3T or 3T versus 1.5? Nothing it's like that. It's all right? about coil size. Yeah, Boy. 70, any, anything. It, do you have signal being generated outside. outside your field of view? Nice. So it's all about coil size. Don't be lazy. Um, you know, work smarter, not harder. Right. So That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, number two. That's, Ooh, my, that's well, my boar monster. Public domain, all of that right there. <laughs> <laughs> Two, two I had uh, susceptibility, metal susceptibility. Yeah, me too. Okay, okay. No, actually, those were athletes on a 3T. Ah. And the reason I say 3T is the higher the magnet strength, the Larmor equation changes. And so you'll see this dielectric. Some people call it RF shading. Some people call it standing wave. Right. The RF is just getting deposited in the tissue, and it's building up, generating its own eddy currents, and it's dephasing. That signal's not coming out. And that's where I just give a, a shout out to, to Luca, who he's, I want to say he's like the Italian version of me. Just, I mean, that dude <laughs> looks cool. I'm like, oh, yeah. I wish I was on the Mediterranean. <laughs> big shout yeah. out to Luca, man. I uh, know. And I see him Great jumping info. in on uh, online forums and, and things like that. So I bought his book because my dream was to do an artifact book. I'll just have to be the English version, I guess. <laughs> but he, he goes in through some uh, great explanations on RF shading and, in the Larmor equation. For sure. So I just want to give him a, a little shout out. But, and everybody differs in their solutions. I don't know. Have you guys ever worked with dielectric pads? I never have. I heard about them. Though. Okay. Yeah. The, I guess word on the street was like, they're no longer FDA approved. I don't know. Again, oh. these are my opinions. At one point we had them at work. At one point they went away. I worked with a, a, the guru of all gurus. And a lot of times people say, oh, it's just larger patients. I don't know if you've ever done anybody with a lot of fluid, like ascites on a 3T. Yeah. Did your images turn out? Oh, no. never. No, it's just all that RF is just absorbed and it's not coming back out. Right. I've worked with those dielectric pads. I remember early on in my career, I, I forgot I had started. I did a scan. I'm like, oh, I forgot the pad. Threw it back on. I didn't see a difference. And again, it's multi-vendor. All right. But my other thought is this, too. When you cover your food in the microwave, why are you covering your food in a microwave? What's oh, the purpose? So it won't make a mess? Yeah, you're not like, oh, if I put this towel, it's going to burn evenly, and my food will be evenly cooked in a microwave. <laughs> I think, I mean, that's just my two cents. But I do have a workaround for dielectric. Oh, nice. nice, nice it's nice. always in the same place. And that's where I developed the boar monster. That brother oh. lives right there, and he is not moving. The boar monster. <laughs> the boar monster. Do you see him? Yeah. See, yeah, and he can't get past that red line. 
Um, I know, and it looks like <laughs> it looks like there's a singularity on the other side. It's like <laughs> yeah, right. pitch black. I can't Abyss. imagine why. Well, yeah, <laughs> why are people afraid of the MRI? <laughs> <laughs> but the reason I drew that red line. So if you're doing a left hip, and you want to work around the dielectric bore monster, which way are you going to put scan the patient? Feet first or head first? Uh, so you want to put them in. In this case. Probably feet first, that's, right? That's correct. Yeah. And it goes away from the bore monster, and the dielectric will not affect your left hip. Now, if you're doing right. a right hip, which way are you going to go? Yeah, you got to go head first. Head first, and you'll work around the dielectric effect. So, hope that helps. I see, yeah, because the red line is dictating, like, where that, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. It's always on that side. Usually a larger field of views as well, so you'll see it a lot in hips. And this is the ChemSat fail. This case came yeah. from the other week. I came in as a, a new tech, and she's on her own. She's doing great, but she's like, it, my fat sat turned out on the pre's, but the post, they stink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if you can tell. What, what kind? What is the workaround for a ChemSat fail? Stir is pretty stir. much. So this is the stir. That's why she didn't have any issues on it. I don't know if you can see, but I dropped the report cursor to show her. I was like, hey, do you see how far over it? Right 226. I mean, this patient's oh, at the right. edge of the bore. Right. And it's cool because I've got uh, some great coworkers who have been around MR since the beginning. You know, Michelle, I was just talking to her. I worked with her yesterday and I was like, yeah, Michelle, yeah. tell me, you were there like when ChemSet came out. She's like, yeah, it was only good for 25 centimeters. That was your range to do a fat set. Wow. And the manufacturer wouldn't guarantee it outside of that. Dang, that's yeah. not a lot. That's not a lot. That's but that's lot. showing in our day and age how much they've improved. And it's based off part per million homogeneity. Right. The How machine. good they're shimming these things now. Yeah. Right. Oh, the way they're shimming them. So a lot of great evidence. Now, the other thing is you don't want to run a stir post-contrast because the IR inversion time puts the GAD in the null point where pathology is, so you can right. actually miss pathology. So just to prevent it, this would be, again, a positional thing. Right. And one trick I had, especially on, on some of these older machines, is I'll actually put the pillow between the patient and the bore because then it forces them over. Oh, yeah. Get you back in that fat set range. Save you from doing a stir. You don't want to be burning through your time. Right. Especially, uh, you know, if you're at a high throughput site. All right. So here's a ChemSat pro tip. If you guys ever done like an elbow arms down or hand or fingers arm down, have you ever had it like fat set the belly but not the hand? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're like, right. oh, yeah how gosh, painful is that? Yeah, right? how painful is that? <laughs> so this vendor, GE, actually came up with a really cool tool, and it's, it's called Localized TG, Transmit Game. And it's under the shim box option. I don't know if you've seen it, if, you, if you're on a, yeah, a newer 26, level. Yeah, 26, I have. Yeah, so this is a fantastic tool. And this is a, a for the win, I call. So you can see I dropped that little shim over the thumb. This was arms down. Lope TG it. And basically, wherever the shim is, is where it's going to center that homogeneity. And it, it'll ah. localize the transmit to that part. So you can see here, this time the abdomen is not fat sad. But it did the finger. This is pathology over here, edema. That's actually a GE guy told me to always make sure that the shim field is field of view is much less than the actual scanning field of view. Yeah, and some people get religious, and I'm sure they run like three hours behind. Have you ever seen them? They're like, yeah. I, I'm sure they wrap Christmas presents great, but like, <laughs> I don't have like time to like be right. religious about shim. But you're right. Like, there's some general slap it on, make it small, high and tight. Let's go. Right. You know, some people are like, well, no air, and and just I'm like, man. It's just a picture representation of what the machine's going to do. I'm, I'm sure there's some leeway that, you know, more going on. And so four and five is the same answers. So if, if you got this one, then, like, super duper extra credit because I tried oh, to trick okay. you. Yeah. I, yeah, I, got, I put spike noise and hearing boom. There hearing, you go. Good. Hearing, I hearing tripped you up. Yeah. <laughs> so these are actually, again, um, would be a positional issue. I remember early on I had a rat. He's like, you know, dagnabbit, don't slap a bunch of cushions to hold that knee still because it was distorting the tissue. Right. You know, I thought that was like <laughs> an ace bandage on the left. Uh, I actually thought about that. Damn, I wish I would have wrote that down. So that, that's the cushion set that comes with the bore. And I love, I mean, I'm like the cushion king. But I, even I have to be delicate, you, you know. <laughs> that's I, a t-shirt, cushion king. <laughs> cushion king <too. laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> but you know what? Guess your images come out first time and, you know, save you a repeat and right. get through it. This, this is actually on an older machine uh, I was scanning the other week. And I don't know, it's a piece of plastic somebody found, and it fits perfectly in the knee coil. And because the other thing, too, is depending where you work, you don't have all day to scan. So if a hand's like this in the scanner and you're doing a coronal, that's like oh, 30 that's slices. Like every, but if you're doing this, you know, right, right. You're doing five slices and that 
device is just amazing because your scans are quick, they're anatomic, and they're beautiful. But just be aware, uh, there's a pattern on that plastic. So, you know, find the smooth side or whatever. Just right. try to minimize it. I haven't heard too many complaints, but um, just be aware of how we're positioning and, and what they can cause. And this is... West didn't spike nose. That's why I was like, man, three times in a row? <laughs> <laughs> Four times, pretty much, right? Because so I put corduroy. <laughs> Yeah, and so you in the last one. And again, I'm not an engineer. This is tech level to tech level. Right. I, I'm sure your comment board could just be blowing up with like, here's the actual cause, and here's, oh, right. here's what happens. Uh, these are just again my little world and how I view things. And this came from the online Wiley Library, which is I actually use Wiley. They're the uh, MRI and practice publisher. Nice. So for my students, we're on edition five. I love the edition four. I think that's kind of the MRI Bible. But this came directly from it. And the, the reason I share it is because we, we call it uh, white pixel, right? Right. Why do we call it white pixel? Do you guys know? We kind of went over this in a recent episode. We okay. just released, right? It was yeah. uh, the very last one that we went. So I can answer if you want me to. Yeah, go for it, Reggie. You know, I guess because there's just a random white pixel in case space, right? That's right. That messes up your whole image space. And so here you can actually see the white pixels. And when the engineers, when you do get it, this is nothing right. essentially that we can fix sometimes it's a little bit of cause one of the most common causes of this we talked about the uh, bias error right. if when you go to plug in your coil if it's connecting but not in all the way sometimes something's vibrating it can generate enough noise the coil can pick it up and it creates a noise spike so that's the most frequent i've seen but other than that you just have to call your engineer and when actually when they come out and test they switch the scanner to case space view and they're actually looking for white pixel. Oh, nice. So, so and then these must be pretty, uh, I guess the further out from the center, the higher the frequency, right? Which means the thinner the line? Or am I getting that backwards? No, no. Okay. I mean, in all, like, now you're diving in like super engineer level because they, they oh, can tell right. like, oh, it's exactly this gradient. This, it's exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. Which way do the lines go? And and you're right because it's it answers a lot of the questions. Right. So that, okay. that's the super advanced uh, apps stuff right there that you're dealing with. This one again. Oh, fine line. It's fine line, and fine line right there. You'll see it here, but you'll see it gone in this repeat. It's a super easy fix, and I don't know. Do you know what causes fine line on s certain vendors? Mm -mm. Do you, Robert? I mean, I'm guessing it's like some sort of encoding artifact. Um, it's kind of a weird thing here. It's actually an odd neck scan. Oh. So odd neck scans. They ha it's the FID. There's these leftover pieces of the free induction decay yeah, yeah, and it maps them in so here's the image that i showed you guys oh yeah and your hint was this i said odd next didn't i oh yeah why am i calling this an odd next because uh, there's two i'm on is there a sat band or then you got mp circle mm. that's your hint because there's no phase wrap on and how does it make it an odd next because the second Next is for out of image. Uh, I don't know. It's actually a genius level thing. And <laughs> so let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> and, no, um, and actually, GE did away with this. Once you get to, I believe, software level 28, mm -hmm. they go just to phase encodings like other vendors. But I do give them credit because I think it's pretty stinking awesome how somebody thought of this. When you click no phase wrap on, you know, let's say, 26 and older software versions on GE. <coughs> what it does is in the background, it doubles your field of view, doubles your matrix, right. and cuts your necks in half. Like it's automatically 100%. Automatically. And then it zooms it in so it's the same what oh, you were seeing because right. you doubled your matrix, your, your pixel size is held. Right. But you cut your necks in half because you doubled your your phase frequent. Right. The amount of encodings. Yeah. Right, yeah. Phase encodings. So, and because those are both time factors. So when you click no phase wrap, on a two neck scan on GE, it's now one X. Dang. And that's why you can't do one but or with can. one one X a lot of times, right? It always makes you add that other average, right? Yeah, there's certain user CVs that lock you out. And so I have a picture of the user CVs. It's an easy fix if you do do this and it does let you oh, when you nice. go to the user control values right here, enhance fine line oh. suppression. Oh. And it's almost always free. Oh, nice. It actually, when I was putting this together, I had it on one sequence. I was like, oh, well, let me fix that protocol. But it had 30 seconds. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I'm like, is it worth the time or, right. or the quality? So you, ha you have to decide. The it one that locks you out, though, Reggie, that you were mentioning right here is this blurring cancellation. Oh, okay. Wh which has a built-in fine line. Uh, blurring cancellation is unique. And like you said, you need at least two necks. Right. Because the way blurring cancellation, 
works is it scans, fills in case space one way, and then it fills it in reverse. Oh, nice. Okay. So they have a built-in fine line. Now, has yeah. fine line always found like on the edge of the slice, or is that just no, where you saw it on Not necessarily. Line? These okay. were just good shots. I was like, okay, nice. yeah, okay. I'll save that. I'll throw it in. And uh, yeah, so the, there's always uh, hints uh, when you look at at the values on the display. Right. And so that was that was my my tip here. The end piece, no phase wrap. So now, if you saw this while you were scanning, would you you would repeat it? It depends, uh, like how good the patient's doing, and like you yeah, know, how much yeah, uh, how much time. A lot it of has. more factors right? over the years. My role as a protocoler, you you inherit a lot of it. I didn't set right. this up. I mean, great great people have gone before me to to do a mammoth work, and you right. know, I've tipped my hat to them, but. Again, I'm a tinker, and so I'm like, oh, look what I, you know, I found that. And, and cool. a majority of this has been eliminated. So For Because sure. a majority of the time, it's free. Right. Using your stethoscope analogy, I'm, I bet that drives you crazy. It looks like they used a knee coil for a wrist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Good catch. <laughs> That's funny. But it's probably the smallest coil available for yeah, that, right? Yeah, and I'm probably the one that scanned it. So. <laughs> 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 All right, next question. <laughs> Uh, eight. Let's see. What'd you guys put for eight? eight. Again, I use different images. Uh, oh, I put eddy current. Okay, and eddy currents are huge actually with EPI imaging. Right. So I was, that was like, ah, I got a, a huge chance with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aliasing. I don't know. So this is actually I had seen this, and I and I love. I have our body rat is amazing, um, Jared. I'll just leave it at that. Tip my hat to you. I have learned so much over the years, especially in the diffusion ADC realm. So on the older units, we actually have to manually post-process our ADCs. Oh, right. I do remember that. GE defaults like to 0 0.01 confidence. Yeah, right up there. That's basically uh, now, and we do three B values. So just for everybody who's scanning diffusion, just keep in mind, you're scanning the same body part at, at, for however many B values you have, minimum of two. So if I have three B, B values, I've scanned that same liver three times. Dang. This is a free breathe, on, at least on this machine. What are the odds that everything's going to match up perfectly? Uh, if it's free breathing, it's zero. Exactly. So believe it or not, they default at like 0 0.01. So in my mind, they're saying the manufacturer's like, hey, there's a 99% chance this is like lined up. <laughs> I never and thought about it like that. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> and so funny. that right. is on the left. And what I do is I QA images. I go through the browser and I'm like, oh my goodness, let me just reprocess this, only changing the confidence value. Right. And so I just changed it to 0 0.9. I'm like 99% sure these are not lining up. This is, again, how my mind makes it work. And boom, black holes are gone. Man. It brought back the values. And so I just remember our radiologist. He said, my, my confidence in, in the text has gone up now. <laughs> right. 99%. I, like, I like that. I'm actually seeing uh, the black holes now. I guess at first when I saw it, I didn't know what I was seeing. The, the, uh, which... So now that, that makes perfect sense because it's the confidence level when you used to do the window, it takes out all the pixels from the inside and place them so, outside, right? Or something like that. And I did, and to, in all honesty, Reggie, I believe the first one I showed you was threshold. And that is right here, this screen oh, here. Oh, right, okay. And so there's two oh, parts. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the threshold, same thing. And that's the image you guys saw. So yeah, that's yeah. a threshold issue. Again, I believe the manufacturer has just defaulted it at too high a value. Right. On the newer systems as the protocol, you can set those values. You can set both the confidence and both the threshold. And when you do, like, voila, look at the image on the right. Yeah. All those pixels that were being omitted that were outside your threshold are now included, making your image more diagnostic. And especially in a case like maybe adrenals or uh, cholestetoma, if you are running a prop diffusion. Yeah. You're now giving, if the patient couldn't have contrast, identity contrast, or not identity, gadolinium-based contrast, um, you're now giving them a diagnostic study for okay. somebody who likely wouldn't have been able to achieve the results they needed. Right. People really don't know how valuable diffusions are, mm -hmm. right? On multiple, not just for the brain either, It'd be right? a game changer right. moving forward. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially prostates Huge. too, man. Yeah. And now they're doing a high definition diffusions. I don't know if you guys are doing the Muse and all that. Oh. So vendors. Looks well, like we're going to have to bring you back. <laughs> <laughs> same, same thing here. I mean, I've even. I don't. You oh, guys yeah, are doing elastographies maps. and star maps yeah, and stuff. Yeah, T two mapping, T one mapping. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. So the star map, a lot of times it'll default here. I've I've gotten calls from applications and you know, and they're just rebuild the sequence. You're correct. Actually, no. You that bar just moves on the newer software to the right of the screen, and again, it's defaulting too high. 
you can see the actual change here from 100 oh, to 15. Right. You go from that to that. So it comes at 100 and just need to move it right. back to some. To yeah. Fifteen. But nice. if, if nobody told you or if you're not aware, you know, yeah. older software to newer, they move the position of some of these, the, the location of these. So they stop getting calls? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm like, here, have at it. I'm happy to right. share. You're, you're allowing the world to grow. You, you know, you're sharing right. zone three oh, with yeah. the world. Oh, yeah. We love so sharing information. That's you're, what we're all about. You're raising the bar for the world and that's that's a great thing yeah no thank you guys you're really gonna have to come back on (laughs) (laughs) after humiliating us Uh, oh toe print who said it robert Robert, you you said it it. man it looks like a fingerprint i'm like yes that's it (laughs) that's actually not an artifact so again technical or positional the clue here is the field of view this is a 12 by 7 512 by 256 that's just high resolution. That's just high That's resolution. what you want to see. So as we as technologists, as technology progresses, I'm working with artificial intelligence now. It sounds like some of you are or will be soon. Yeah. It's, it's out. It's hitting the streets right. and people are lined up to buy it. Uh, it's high resolution stuff. So get used to seeing things the way you've never seen them before. Get used to speed you've never seen before. Man. But uh, yeah, that was the clue the, of this smashing good looking image. Number 10. Echo blur. Echo blur. Uh, oh, for too high of uh, ETL? Too high of ETL can cause yeah. it. Absolutely. And that, I don't know, this is this is my echo blur experiment for Mr. Wizard. Oh, nice. If you guys are ready for that. But oh, the yeah. Do we got to turn the lights off? It might be hard because some of these lights stay on 24-7. Oh, yeah. No, that's fine. Okay. I think we can do it. Basically, if you wanted, I was thinking I'll just turn this baby on and you can put your cell phone in and just take a live photo or just record oh. it. And then we can look at the little strip at the bottom. And, oh, the, yeah. and what it'll show is that when the cones are facing you, that's your echo, right? We, we spin a water molecule. We turn off our RF and it realigns to the magnet, you know, TE and, and TR two different ways Mm -hmm. but the echo is what we sample and that's why i wrote this proverb and i I can share it if you guys like ancient proverbs yes this this proverb is a good one and it says this a wise person is hungry for knowledge while the fool feeds on trash oh and the reason it goes in with echo blur i mean granted thought we were friends <laughs> <laughs> you looked him dead in the eyes <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was my mic <laughs> we were friends <laughs> but the reason i say that if, if you start with trash you'll end with trash when you work with applications application specialists the the big thing that they're always trying to do is keep this echo spacing below 10 if you oh, start nice. to get beyond 10 you're starting with trash and you're just going to echo train link that trash all the way to the end and it's going to look like this this scanner was an old bird and people had kind of thrown in the hat given up on it this is my scan i did it It was a young fella in his early 20s i knew the guy was copacetic competent and, and when he said i'm holding still because how right. how many how years have people yelled that. at patients hold still this looks like trash you know right <laughs> and, and it's not the patient i mean we are guilty right oh, and a lot of and people apology like, oh. so how how do you st- so I guess with motion, would you just see more of that ghosting throughout the picture going all the way through that, the phase direction? Kind of like that pulsation artifact. You see how it's kind of consistently kind of going through on that very top? Yeah, that's a, a good thing too. Uh, one of my tips to eliminate artifact versus true patient motion right. is, and it's hard because we're just using single slides. Oh, right. Like, can't scroll, scroll through it. Yeah, right? if you're scrolling through and they're like moving, you know, in, in an uh, X, Y plane or something. Right. Or the cortical margins are blurry. Those are general indications that I look for. The thing for echo blur, what controls your echo spacing are three big factors. Your frequency matrix, your bandwidth, and your field of view. Those three are inextricably linked to your echo space. The newer scanners, like here, this is a newer GE, they actually separate it here. On the older scanners, it's actually the first echo listed in your minimum TE. Oh, okay. So the, and, I don't know. Have you guys ever thought of why is there a minimum and a maximum? Well, because I know like your your true TE is the mean number in there, right? Like so, it's like whatever, or maybe is it the mean, or am I thinking uh, median? One of those. It's one of those like in the right in the middle. How you right? can send and and some vendors like Siemens are great because you can just drive it. Yeah, and say, just center like, oh. the TE. That's yeah. the center. For here, when I center the TE, I, I it's you're right. It's the middle value of this, and then you can type it in here. This sequence happens to be a T1, so you want minimum T1 
TE is not the factor we're looking at the TR response. Right. Okay. But the, check it out. So the minimum here, our first echo is at eight, and the last echo is at 34. The reason is there's four echo trains, so it'll go eight, 16. Well, you know. dang. And this this was the parameters that gave us the echo blur, or no? No, I just wanted okay. to do a screenshot to show you what controls that echo space, which can then ameliorate the echo blur. I see. And and so once, um. I looked at the screen and I, I think the echo space was like at 17 on oh, this image okay. or higher. And, and there are some things that also affect it offhand, not as much like little CVs like flow comp or blurring cancellation. But the newer software does something um, pretty good because blurring cancellation, it'll jump, it almost double that f minimum there. Uh. But the newer software separates it and still shows you it's actually eight, even though this is going to show higher. But most of the apps people I work with don't use blurring cancellation. And so I started um, just kind of mitigating it and taking that off and doing a few other things. So once I found out that the minimum TE was way beyond what it should be, this is a repeat of the same picture. And now you can actually see the sesamoid bones right? where before you couldn't. Yeah, right. yeah. It's, it's a night and day difference. Yeah. So that's that was my experiment. If you wanted to put your cell phone... It's a really small foot in there. <laughs> Robert, when did you have time to do that one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, 11. So what was, was 10? Oh, okay. I so did put acceleration artifact. Yes, one out of 17. <laughs> Finally, I showed up. I got that one. Woo! Did you get the candy? Where did that come from? Lady it's like a parade in here. <laughs> And there, now I, I grouped in acceleration because over the years, acceleration has changed. Um, first level acceleration was MSense or um, Asset, right. which is pretty cool. These are actually Asset artifacts. I had a, a young student uh, text me the other day, and he's like, how do you get rid of the hot lips? I said, what are you doing? An abdomen? He's like, yes. I was like, hot lips? Hot I lips. love he that. Called it, he called it hot lips. How do you get rid of these hot lips? <laughs> <laughs> So Yo, when a t-shirt. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You're a marketing mogul. I love it. And uh, basically, when asset, do you guys understand how asset works? Explain oh, with it. the overlap, with it, it or the unwrapping? I guess. Yeah, that's exactly okay. right. And so, anytime you use asset, you have to have what? You gotta have like a coil that's gonna be in your phase direction. You have. You're right. right. It has to be phased array. Right. And. There's also something you have to add to your scan, another sequence. Calibration? Cal scan. And there's a reason for oh, that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. This first level, there's like K space acceleration and then like post K space. And I kind of, that thought dawned on me. Somebody had dropped it in an online, an online form and I was like, okay. So the way that I think of asset is it's intentionally phase wrapping your image. Right. And it's your phase encodings that cost you time. So you have a factor and you can increase it or decrease it. The right. higher your factor, the faster your scan because it's chopping into your field of view more. It's reducing that phase. Right. It uses the Cal scan to unwrap the image. Uh, I just learned about a little bit of this recently uh, too, with just with the coil sensitivity maps that the scanner does. And yes, man, I didn't know how much uh, that really played a factor. So acid is kind of an old school thing. It's like the first gen, like, Hey, we have this wonderful tool called MRI, but nobody's going to hold their breath for 30 minutes, right. you know? So right. that's where ASIC came in. And to help mitigate these artifacts, they recommended a couple centi centimeter field of view clearance to prevent those artifacts from showing up. So some people get them real bad. Oh. Maybe you're doing an adrenal and that line is right through the adrenal. You can adjust your field of view or you can decrease your acceleration factor. I see. A lot of people do arms up for abdomens. And I mean, if you get these, you know, geriatric patients, it's hard on their shoulders. Oh yeah. Really the only sequence you have to worry about is the coronal arms down. But, and here's a screenshot. So this from too, there from too much over, uh, I guess too much, un, it's not un, able to unwrap the whole thing. That's right. If, okay. if you have anatomy outside, your field of view mm -hmm. and assets on it's trying to wrap that in there and it's coming through as really funky artifacts like like this here i tried to build a pelvis protocol with asset which you the coil can handle it but right. the techs were having issues with larger patients because there was soft tissue outside the field of view oh. assets like throw it on in there you know right like, map that through and you get these wonky artifacts so again 
one solution is to decrease your asset factor. And then the other is uh, increase your field of view. Again, you know, balance with your, your matrices to keep your resolution pixel size. But have you guys ever heard of fake no phaser app? Yeah. Fake no phaser app? Fake, oh. fake no phaser app. No, I haven't heard of fake no, no phaser app. Like, yeah. This is a pro tip. On um, newer machines, you can actually, there's an older machine. See how the factor only goes to 1.25? Oh, yeah, yeah. On the newer machines, you can go to one. Oh, so where it's off, but not really off? Exactly. So when you go to oh. one, it locks out the field of view. So if you have anatomy outside, it's not going to wrap it in. Now, here's the cool part. Uh -huh. You can still trim your phase field of view. So now you have a, a fake no phase wrap, and you can get the time saving. So nice. that's like a super, that's from Brad. It was, I like that. Nice. Yeah, super, super fake cool. Fake no phase wrap. Fake no phase wrap tip. Um, I also put Arc or Grappa. Now, these are case-based manipulation tools. Um, newer level acceleration techniques because what they'll do is they'll start to kind of omit the outer portions of case space and then the higher your factor it'll start to eat into the center and that's where the time savings comes because everything is phase encodings and case space right which can lead to different artifacts in fact this is one yesterday when I was scanning actually that one I had the bias fault error on I had a rat. He's like, dude, what's up with uh, some of our abdomen work? It's starting to look like 1980s video game. <laughs> can <laughs> you, so eight bit? Can, yeah. Can you see that? I'm like, right. what the heck? Because it's image space. It's after wow. case space that's applying this. So same patient. I repeated with asset off. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that is crazy. So, and then there's another tip. If you are on a machine that you can look at your cow scan, You've always wondered, like, what? why do I even have this? Why do I even need to see it? Right. If you have a coil that you think is going out, do you, do you guys know how uh, the uh, CalScan works? I mean, not really. It's, Go ahead it's, pre that, it's yeah. pretty cool. It actually scans twice. It's real fast. You know, right. like five, ten seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It scans once using the coil and then once using the inherent body. I got a trick question for you. Well, maybe not a trick question. But if, it's, if, you're, doing, if you're doing an abdomen, do you need to make them hold their breath for the cow scan? It depends because... If you're using like um, pre-scan normalize yeah, yeah, yeah. or pure, it applies it to the pixel. So you want the anatomy to match I'll be up in the same place. Mm -hmm. Or you're gonna get that line, huh? Or or, or, line or yeah, it'll have like misregistration as far as applying the pixel. So the cool thing is, if you do, if you're on an older machine and you think a coil's going out, this is the the cow scan. I just showed you the first set and the second set. When you call the engineer if you're having issues, they love to look at this because if there's a coil out, you, you'd see it. Oh, so, so this is kind of equivalent to the uh, sensitivity maps almost. Yeah. The Cal scan it, is what develops the sensitivity map, I guess. That they, makes use, sense. they use a lot of that pre-scan information. You're right, to develop yeah. sensitivity maps. and I and see. Uh, So this is, yeah, again, the first one checks the coil. So that's why you only see this. You don't see out here. The second one is, again, the inherent body, and that's why you see the difference. Oh, yeah. And we talked about using ARC Too much or GRAPA. Or something. Yeah. I don't know if you heard that Siemens names theirs after alcohol. Oh, yeah, actually. So yeah, Grappa's grape, scrape alcohol. And, oh, really? Yeah, Caprania. Yeah, if, obviously, <laughs> you're not going to the classy places, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a bud? <laughs> <laughs> the Natty Light. <laughs> Click on the Natty Light. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to show, because this is a, a good demonstration. Do you see how grainy this looks? Yeah. Again, this acceleration technique is in case base. You start omitting the resolution, and so you see an inherent grain. Some rads love the grain, though. They equate that to resolution, but in reality, some of it's just your acceleration technique. Okay. This is, this is like my favorite artifact. I don't know phase if you guys offset. got that. Phase nice. offsets. I actually wanted to name this artifact, and, and there was an email chain with the vendor. This is the same as phase cancellation? Um, or you mean the um, phase correct? line or something? Or maybe I'm – no, go ahead. I'm sorry because you're probably about to get into that. So I wanted to name this artifact Hydra. And <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys know who the Hydra is or what the Hydra is? Yeah, it's Greek mythology, That's right. right. Hey, do they guard you. the entrance? No, that's Cerberus that guards the entrance to Hades. Oh, okay. What's yeah, Hydra? <laughs> Cerberus, I think, is a three-headed well, dog, right? Right, yeah. 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 So the Hydra is this – mythical sea monster but every time you cut a head off do you know what happens it grows back Two grow back oh right so right, then you right. cut two off four and there's hercules fighting again public domain image they're free <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hercules saved the day on that one by the way <laughs> if you guys haven't seen that movie big shout out actually haven't <laughs> <laughs> nobody has and, and this is and this is Whatever. this is why i brought the edge of sketch and i'm sure oh yeah any any 1980s kid and older will know what this is man 
uh, for you younger I've kids. Seen one of those, yeah, yeah these don't take bad batteries. Did it used to be red? <laughs> yeah, this, this probably has been sitting in a, a window somewhere. But it doesn't take batteries for you younger generation kids. So <laughs> oh, right. If your phone dies. <laughs> it is not touch one, screen. It is a, <laughs> it's a different type of screen. Yeah. <laughs> right. But so you got basically like an X and a, and a Y axis. If you could point it towards the camera a little but bit. But how do you make a diagonal line? Oh, yeah. You have to kind of go. Same time. At the in. same oh. time. Both at the same time. When you scan an MR, if you're in an oblique plane, how many gradients are on? Oh, uh, probably two at the same time. That's right, because you have an X, Y, and a Z. So right, right, right. you're stressing two gradients. Right. And if it's a fast spin echo, you've got multiple echoes, you start to get phase offsets. Oh. And that's where phase correct comes from. Okay. And it's pretty cool. It's an old button. I never knew what it did, and I always hated it because it added a whole lot of time to my pre-scan that I didn't have. But now I so know it's it. presenting itself easily as motion as well. Yeah, I have been hurt so many times by calling these in. Hey, uh, having artifact issues. Uh, it's patient motion. Right. That's a dead end. I'm like, it's not. It's, and you just keep calling, calling. Finally, I start. Uh, one vendor was really supportive and sent me some. I actually met the guy that invented face correct. Oh, nice. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I mean, like, super. Super dope. Like way to take on a challenge right there. I was huh? like, sit down, I got questions. Right. It was a right. highlight of your career right there. Now I can retire. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh it was really cool and I don't know if anybody knows this. They don't teach this in school, obviously, because there's enough material. But you have your your B sub zero, you got your big magnet, right? Yeah. And then you've got your gradient magnets. Did you know there's another set behind that of XYZ gradients? Like a Mm. Like a fake set, well, or I, a we covered this on the first episode that we did with you. But did you? I don't remember okay. the details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Back. And that's what it's doing. So in your pre-scan, or if you run a diffusion, it'll say reference scanning. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. looking for eddy currents. It's looking to, and it'll use this extra set of X Y Z to fix the phase offsets, the eddy currents. In this case, you can see um, phase correct was actually on in both. The issue on some software levels was arc. Oh. So, yeah, it wasn't applying the, the, the face correct. So here you see no arc. Same patient. Do you see the, the hydra go away? Or right. phase offsets, I should say, for the general public. Unless you guys all want to agree, we can vote hydra, hydra and adopt it. Yeah, Wouldn't like it be it. cool to click the hydra button instead of face correct? Yes. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't think off. I would turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> um, which another fact on that is... It's predominantly non-fat set sequences because you, elim oh. you you eliminate a tissue. So you eliminate, oh, you know, things offset and vibrate out in space. But again, so removing arc, but where you get your time savings is you can actually, I equate like acceleration or grappa, you know, at arc at, at two to like, you can cut your necks in half if you take it off. Oh, for, I see. Cause it does it affect, still be the same time. Still right? be the and SNR. Does, other yeah. than that, it doesn't affect your resolution, but you can see that the difference here the the coolest thing once you do ge on the new 29 mm -hmm. has invented dynamic face correct and i was like popping champagne bottles <laughs> <Damn> <laughs> it. Uh. dynamic face correct so i don't have to because with deep learning everything is acceleration on one x well you don't want to fight with the hydra <laughs> so hercules to death for it. hercules Why do baby it? <laughs> <laughs> olympics are over <laughs> All right. So again, what you, there are other things that create phase offsets. If you're off isocenter, the gradients are more stressed. Because remember, in the middle, it's perfectly homogeneous off isocenter. Um, I used to, you'll notice a, a, a matrix change here, a more balanced matrixy. Oh, closer to being square mm -hmm. than rectangle? Nice. Yeah, yeah. Less truncation gives, less right. offsets. Uh, maybe you've seen this on a T spine, Loke. Yep. Face correct. The counter look. Gone. Uh, nice. So you can see face correct doing it, doing his jab. And then you can see it here too. And you can honestly tell that that's oh. not patient motion in these cases too, versus the uh, the blurry one that we saw with the echo. Yeah. Uh, because it's just literally localized in those areas, right? Like, that's it's right. not actually ghosting a lot with the bone and everything else. So this one's kind of pretty nice to identify and be like, oh, turn on my face correct. That's right. And Reggie, you nailed it. The thing that it tells me it's not patient motion is the cortical margins are, are solid. They're clear. So otherwise you would see the whole image blurring. 
my kids are standing right outside the door. <laughs> Future MR techs. I like it. And I don't know if you remember, like, how long you guys have been in the industry. When I started in 03, they're like, I was trained, like, don't angle the patient. You know, don't throw them in there and just start scanning. Like, oh, we had to do, like, straight, huh? yeah, orthogonal positioning. I'm like, is this oh. an urban legend? And then sure enough, like a year or so ago, we had a patient with an implant, had to use that old school quadrature TR coil, and it, it didn't have acceleration, and the patient was angled. And they're like, what are all of these right. like wormhole looking things? And I was like, never seen that. And I like, I was like, you're stressing the gradients. Oh. And so sure enough, I made it, I, we rescanned it orthogonally and it went away. Wow. <laughs> I was like, get out of town. Could they spread that out? The, the, or cause you, you changed it to orthogonal versus straight or whatever. Right? Yeah, so it was obliqued, you know, and you, you're going with your ACPC. Oh, right. And however right. it was, it was, but again, remember an oblique is using two gradients. Right. And EPI, you're rocking your gradients. Yeah. So, okay, let's Constantly just scan true axial. And the eddy currents went away. I see. Same, same thing here. I, I love sending my coworkers. I've seen that too, where if you go straight sometimes, your time will actually go down. Mm -hmm. I always wonder why that was. Yeah, there are some weird things out there. Right. But, but you're like, okay, maybe this is it's what's like, causing I'll, it. I'll just keep it there. And the nose here is crooked. <laughs> and then it's straight. And, and basically the only change was the face direction. Oh. And so it... and. Actually, the way this was built, if the face was right to left, it would give you the warning, like, hey, may cause peripheral nerve stimulation, yeah. you know, all the dermatomes. And, um, but the other thing, too, is, is some people call these wormholes, if they get real bad, you can start seeing, like, black holes in them. You'll need to call your engineer because the gradients can actually vibrate loose. There's actually bolts that hold these gradients in. So, yeah, don't hesitate to call if you're having issues with your diffusion. Um, and then the reason I put like old school, like, Hey, I had to do orthogonal, the newer machines are, you Good know, with that, oh huh? dude, they're whistling. Um, is it the gradient strength now? So they can just handle so much more. They can handle a right. lot more, but when MR first came out, it was orthogonal only. So there was, I don't, I don't know if you've heard of the urban legends, like, Hey, was it Demadian? Does he get like a nickel or a, a dime every time someone clicks oblique? You, like right. you always hear these like right. stories, like so who invented that? And you know, or did the one vendor pay million multi millions to use that oblique option? Because he, <laughs> he was the genius to say, if I turn both knobs at the same time, uh -huh. I can get an oblique. Man. And number thirteen, did you get it? Did you get? I'm a little embarrassed about this one. <laughs> that one. Motion. I'm, yeah. Motion. I'm going to go with that, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. Finally. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. You, you got, got it. it. Come on, man. Cameras can't see. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. But uh, it's tough with with coil design, vendor design. Uh, you can't build a protocol that's a cookie cutter. Right. The shoulder. I mean, look at the scapula, the glenohumeral joint. It's at a 45 degree. Some people roll their patients flat, and then the breathing motion goes over the shoulder, you know, maybe you're on a hard shell coil where it just covers it. This is the same patient. The only difference is change in the phase direction. You can see a little bit of the phase up here. Now it's just going over, but again, you can't, it's not always a one size fits all. Every tech has to think at a certain level. Um, when do you use one paddle versus two? I, again, do you want to drive a Ferrari or do you want to drive a motorhome? Right. Um, you want eight channels or four there. There are times where I will just use one paddle. If I'm doing a sternum, I'm not going to throw a paddle on the, on the posterior. I otherwise I'll get cardiac motion, mediastinal motion, subclavian right. motion. I don't need that. I just need that surface coil right there against the money. Um, the reason I put the DL dilemma is we are scanning so fast. Artificial intelligence is out. It's coming. I even saw this week in the imaging technology news. Oh, yeah. Siemens got approved for an 80 centimeter bore. Oh, wow. And it did mention using some of these AI algorithms. Wow. It's a 0.55. It's a one liter helium lightest I mean, magnet ever made. 80 centimeter bore. I mean, they're going to put a pool in the back of that thing. <laughs> I know. Like, oh, man. man. Yeah. So the dilemma is everything's one next with acceleration. I remember this with CT boards. Well, say you've got a 10 second scan, but a patient swallows for five seconds. All right. That's 50% motion. I mean, again, if uh, there's. Oh, so is that why you, when you add an average, it helps with the motion? That's right. Yeah. That that average sense. is beautiful, but you eat it in the time hole. But if it you're kills adding, your time. It kills yeah. your time. So 
what are other ways to do it? And, and you can, so maybe increase your next a few and then increase your acceleration factor. Right. Now we, to jump back to the Anifact, cause techs, sometimes we're scared, we're new, sometimes we're lazy. We throw the big coil on, right? Right. And it's creating Anifact issues. Right. At least for me, I, I use a lot of GE equipment. The new air coil, I don't know if you've used the air no, coil. No, not yet. I've it's, heard things about It's pretty smart in this. It's a huge coil, you know, 30 channels. But what if I'm doing a hand? I don't need all these channels. I'm going to die with Anifact, right? right? What it does is in the pre-scan, it's going to know which coil elements are needed for the field of view and turn the rest off. Oh, really? Now, and do you have to set, like, maybe your transmit gain or your shim box around where you're imaging? Like, how does it know where you're imaging? Just it recognizes the anatomy? It recognizes, or? and then in the pre-scan, it'll check and just run its uh, test, turn everything, which is great. Oh, because of the noise. Wherever you're not picking up signal, it's going to be noisy. So, ah, oh, I see. It's genius. That makes sense. It's super genius. And now you can aggressively trim in that no phase, or your phase over sample, trim it back because it's turned off those elements. And so now wow. you can scan fast, scan pretty, and eliminate the anifact penalty. Man. Do you like that coil? Um, I like it. I would, I mean, it's pretty smashing because like, especially for body work, if you're doing like pelvis, abdomen, because then I crank for diffusions, the higher you accelerate, the faster you package your echo. So the, oh. the higher quality your diffusion right. image. How many channels does it have? Uh, the one I have is 30. Okay. Man. So, and they do, I haven't tried them, but again, I don't want a giant thing for a wrist. They right. do have an extremity one. I haven't used them yet, but those are the ones that I'm like licking my chops to get a hold of. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's the technology that's advancing that's keeping up. I mean, there's a huge demand for techs, and yeah. not everybody's huge. like trained like they once were. You know, it used to be like a Jedi program, and I'll take you <laughs> under my wing, and, and you'll right. be a journeyman for 20 years, Print and maybe <laughs> maybe exactly. you'll be somebody someday. But now it's just like we need a body, uh, right? <laughs> get anybody? Hey, you in the hallway? <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. Uh, but this one's unique. I threw this in here because this is it's the propeller artifact oh, on, a right. on a circular vessel. So sometimes you'll see that. There are options depending on the vendor, like GE has harmonized, but it's only recommended for brain. And I've heard different ways what it'll do is localize the brain. So this is just theoretically, uh, the super guru said to me, he's like, well, you can, if, if you knew when to do it, you could turn your head sideways and then turn it back because it would scan the first one sideways and then so your head would be side, but oh, it, would, yeah. it would be clear the way that it's packaged in case space radially. And this was the, uh, I don't know if you guys put transmit gain for 14. No. no. Yeah, I put susceptibility. I did too. The, the way that transmit gain works, again, we kind of talked a little bit about it with that transmit gain shim volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The machine, when you put a patient in, set up your sequence, and it's doing a pre-scan, you hear that click, right? It, it's, it's your your soundtrack to the show, right? That right. Ch -ch 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 -ch. You that's your pre-scan. <laughs> you know what it's doing? It's shooting in an RF pulse, trying to find the optimal like strength to flip that water molecule. Oh, hence the transmit. Hence the transmit and the gain. Uh, How much am I cranking it up? Oh, I don't know right. if you play guitar. You guys play guitar? Right. Uh, it's on my wish list. Okay. Definitely bucket Dave list does. thing. Dave, <laughs> when you want to get that killer distortion, what do you do to your gain? Crank it up. Dang. Look what happens on your MR when you crank it up. It gets distorted. It's the same principle. It's going to hit that water molecule too hard, over flips it. So when it comes back to the coil, it's trash. You oh. start with trash, you end with trash. Right. <laughs> Why'd you put a Reggie? <laughs> yeah. It's cool. Reggie, we need to talk after class. <laughs> <laughs> just seem right. <laughs> That's funny. And and these are just general things. Uh, MRSO is great. It's It's bringing to the world you know right to the forefront safety SAR is a huge thing it's the number one issue is burn so every 10 in your tg window so if you go after your auto pre-scan you click on manual mm -hmm. it'll show you where the tg set every 10 increases two times the amount of power so that's a ton of rf oh, wow. and these are just again this, this is my opinion and i love your disclaimer these are just my thoughts this is not medical advice this is right. just my little world things that i do but these are general guidelines. And, you know, if I'm doing an L spine and I'm seeing things way above like 165, 185, I'm like, okay, something's going on here. What's, what's up? And in this case, I walked in and the tech who was a very, very competent tech says, look at my images. What's going on? I said, are you using Loke TG? She said, yes. I said, don't. Mm. Because it was kind of a, a, it's like a sword. It can be a tool or a weapon. Right. And we had issues early, early, early on on old, you know, on some some of the software, 
a lot of it's been changed with the software updates where our large L spines weren't turning out on our 3T. And so one guru was like, hey, if you drop a shim volume like way high in the abdomen, you know, in the anterior, yeah, it'll drive that TG up and it'll get you your image. So I see. That's when it could be a tool, but it could be a, a weapon as well. Right. And then we're just going to kind of, I guess my format's a little different. Oh, with how big the screen is? Yeah. It's I like throwing the, the pictures off a little bit. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But this right here, 15, I don't know what you guys put down for 15. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> distortion. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, distortion, poor image, image quality, area loss. It's actually filtration. That example I showed you actually on your test was a leg. I had, a, I had printed out a handout for that scanner. And oh. some of your scanners, you might see like a save original, which is helpful because I'll have text be like, I'm repeating and I'm not seeing anything. It's just black. I said, look at your original. It's filtration that's killing you. So here is an arrow. It's pointing at S. It's showing that this is skick. And see how it's burnt out? And this one shows a P. This is pure. It oh. normalized the tissue to bring back the signal. A lot of the newer software... I don't know. Siemens is big on it. GE too. They have image tags. When you sec- select your body part, what are you oh, scanning? Right. They're turning off things in the background or turning them on. When you pick liver on a 29 software version, it's going to adjust your initial RF pulses to bring this back. I had an issue. We had rebuilt our breast protocols a few years ago, and this is what we were running. And I'm like, oh, it's homogenous. It's great. And the rads are like, I'm getting outside studies that have a lot more signal in the breast. The culprit was actually pure. Skick is not an option on these, and they do it for a reason. Pure actually is not recommended for, like, CAD softwares. So it can throw it off because it applies that Cal scan to the pixel. Right. So as the intensity changes, you know, their dynamics can be off. Once This is the same image reprocessed. On these, some vendors you can uh, clear view. You can add. You can check different filters. So same patient. This is with pure off. Oh, I see. And, and now you can see all the signal is in the breast where the rads want it. He's like, I'm not looking at the heart. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. So same thing. So that's kind of similar to like, uh, or I guess in reverse, you know, when, when you're scanning a lumbar and the patient's like super far away from the coil just because they have so much, you know, body tissue back there. Um, and it's just dark where you want to see the actual uh, spinal cord and stuff and all of the fat behind there is bright. Uh, so like switching your or turning maybe your pure or something off would fix that, right? Absolutely. Nice. And if you have the option to save your original, you can check. And, and I even Siemens, you can post process, I believe, at it. That yeah. Back when or he's, Retro, uh, he's all about those little Siemens tip, the S magnetic world. He's really good. Um, I'm more of, again, a GE user. So the Clairview is real helpful. Right. But no, that's, that's exactly right. And again, I tend to not use pure on on flex coils because i i call it like an airbrush i don't know if you guys have ever i'm not assuming that anybody's graffitied i'm not saying or implying anything but if you've ever <laughs> but if you bedazzle <laughs> <I'm a dazzle. laughs> now that's believable <laughs> <laughs> oh man ryan stone jacket reggie uh, <laughs> ryan stone reggie right. um but yeah so sometimes you can get like a modeled look uh, almost with the with the pure but it, here is a case so here's clear view and you can click and preview and click and preview this is this is with it off this is with no filtration and the rads would had have a difficult time. Hey, is there a deltoid tear? Here it is with Dang. a filter on and it, oh, skick, surface coil intensity. Yep. It's anything by the coil is going to have the brightest signal. Well, let's even it out. And so there are times where it's beneficial. Same thing, another wind, no filtration. That's with skick. The skick is also by the wayside on the newer GEs. It becomes scenic. It's kind of a combo of like a pure and skick, but. Oh, nice. The. Cal scan is eliminated essentially, so your pre scan time goes down. Oh. But pure is still an option as well. Um, and 16, what'd you guys put for 16? I did for low signal. Oh, that's, good. I mean, that's. Yeah. Robert says the same. I put noise yeah. artifact. Yeah, <laughs> noise. That's that's what it is. And that's again. <laughs> Re- Reggie needs one too. Or yeah, you, I got another one, one, right? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Hook him up. Let's make it right. You got it right. Stubbers. Yeah. 
no, quick no, shout out. No playing favorites, <laughs> To our Dave. sponsor, Starburst, in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I got this call. Uh, actually, it's great because as I was putting this together, you know, you, you still get, hey, what's this? Or And this tech is, is new and she's great. And she's like, I scanned bilateral shoulders. She hadn't flipped them yet. Sends me this email. And she's like, one of them, the filtration, I believe, has fixed the issues. And then I, I oh. tried to humbly respond. I said, actually, it's the coil placement. <laughs> <laughs> so, because you, you can see. You can see the model here. Right. And, but the coil's way up here. And then I was like, hey, here's the coil. So that's why this looks so good. And obviously, the critical picture, if you had to get one for a radiologist, would be coronal PD fat sat so they can determine rotator cuff tears. And again, this is where I like to use that stethoscope analogy. Reggie, you can build protocols. I can build protocols. But I can't overcome a bad patient setup. Right. Right. Yeah. If you start off with trash... Go in with trash. <laughs> yeah. I like it. There's your T-shirt right there, baby. <laughs> There's your T-shirt. And then this last one is actually pathology, and I'm not. I'm not sure what you what you boy. Dave, get your candy ready. Pathology. <laughs> I didn't get this. Ah, uh, yeah, I just uh, yeah. I put a uh, poor fast hat. Right, and that's what I wanted people to. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to lead you guys down that bunny trail because I came in. I'm trying to remember this case, but. You would pull your hair. That's actually the the T two fat sat on the on the left, and the the T one with contrast fat sat. The fat sat's correct, and the reason is, and it's pretty burnt out on this monitor, but it's actually ho homogeneous. Oh. You can see it through the axilla, through the sternum. That fat sat is everywhere. You can see a lesion here, and I went back and asked the radiologist, and they're like, oh, "It's dermal invasion. That's true pathology." The other thing when I see this, um, I don't know if you guys do a lot of breast work, is I'll look at the history to see if they've had radiation therapy because oh. that, that just, you know, you get that, yep. is there a dermal inflamed, right? Yeah. yeah. Just that hard scarred tissue. Um, so that's again, knowing pathology can save you a headache. It can help you in your journey of not running behind because I work second shift. The worst thing that can happen to me when I come in is, Hey, we're only three hours behind right. today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> right <laughs> you have to eat it but um yeah so it's pathology feel free to reach out to your radiologist before you pull all your hair out right start running that five minute stir <laughs> yeah post gad <laughs> yeah well again post gad right? waste of so time right you waste of time you then you're okay I, i'm am I gonna do a flex which is not always recommended for breast imaging because a right. pixel swap you can get nipple swap you can get implant swap um well, this puts our presentation to shame. Yes. Shut up with your own, and we right, actually right. appreciate it. Oh, well, now they do have a like. Could you run a Dixon in this case? Absolutely, right? But there's that. Uh, what's it called? It starts with an A. A certain type of sequence that Asp he has. Asper. Yeah, Asper. Right. So that's what I use on the, on our chem sets. There's special, which is spectral inversion at lisp lipids, and then the, there's Asper, and basically Asper's it's a com combined chem sat with inversion pulse oh, okay, and so that's what that is. yeah and and that's what this sequence is okay but then you're right you could use the dixon which i'm sorry I, I did use the proprietary term which is flex or ideal right oh right and so i keep them in there it's just kind of like a hail mary like hey i'm having a hard time throw it in there which has saved right. some studies in the past but if you don't need you, to run it because those are kind of be long too right those they can especially a, a three-point dixon which ge calls ideal right you start adding the points oh, you start yeah. adding time but now with i don't know if you've had compressed sense imaging and and oh, all yeah. sorts of yeah cube flexes and you can uh, you can really go to town and have a good time mm -hmm. huh? but yeah so really it's knowing what is causing it is it mechanical positional technical right. throwing those buckets and hey it, it showed up on the t1 it did show up on the t2 same place i can see fat side everywhere else doc is this legit or not you're legit. You help to explain it in very simple terms, very easy to understand terms, Jonathan. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thanks thank for having you, me. I feel like we've covered so much. Yeah, so, this has I mean, been a great, great episode. This should be a, a CE or two. Oh, <laughs> thanks oh, for that's that's what I'm, saying. I'm, I'm thinking A++. <laughs> plus plus. Like, this should be like five CEs <laughs> yeah, right here. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, again, thank you again, for Jonathan, for coming. We really appreciate you. You are our first guest. You're now our second guest, but you certainly won't be our last. Well, thank you. Um, thank are you. I didn't say that right, but you know what I meant. Thank you, Lord. Thank you again. Reggie, is there anything that you feel like we didn't cover? That 
Um, man, I mean, this was, uh, I really enjoyed this. It actually helped me out a lot. I appreciate it, Jonathan. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate you guys. Yeah. And what you guys Well, do. we appreciate you, all of us. Everyone here. <laughs> Thanks Even everyone Dave. Who Where's the candy for Dave? Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Thanks to everyone who's watching. Yeah, uh, Zone 3 Podcast, we appreciate you guys yeah. talking about us to your friends and your coworkers. Hit subscribe, hit like, do all those things that they tell you to do. And uh, thank you again. I guess Zone 3 Podcast. Podcast. We are out. We're out. Good. Jonathan. Man, you're a freaking genius. Yeah, good work.